Hello and welcome back for day 353. Today we will be reading from the Apocryphal Book of 1st Maccabees, chapters 5 and 6, the Apocryphal Book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, and Revelation, chapter 10. 1st Maccabees, chapter 5. Now when the nations round about heard that the altar was built, and the sanctuary renewed as before, it displeased them very much. Wherefore they thought to destroy the generation of Jacob, that was among them. And thereupon they began to slay and destroy the people. Then Judas fought against the children of Esau in Idumea at Arabatin, because they besieged Gael, and he gave them a great overthrow, and abated their courage, and took their spoils. Also he remembered the injury of the children of Baan, who had been a snare and an offense unto the people, and that they lay in wait for them in the ways. He shut them up therefore, in the towers, and encamped against them, and destroyed them utterly, and burned the towers of that place with fire, and all that were therein. Afterward he passed over to the children of Ammon, where he found a mighty power and much people, with Timotheus their captain. So he fought many battles with them, till at length they were discomfited before him, and he smote them. And when he had taken Yazar, with the towns belonging thereto, he returned into Judea. Then the heathen that were at Galaad assembled themselves together against the Israelites that were in their quarters to destroy them. But they fled to the fortress of Dathema and sent letters unto Judas and his brethren. The heathen that are round about us are assembled together against us to destroy us, and they are preparing to come and take the fortress whereunto we are fled. Timotheus being captain of their host, Come now therefore, and deliver us from their hands, for many of us are slain. Yea, all our brethren that were in the places of Toby are put to death. Their wives and their children also they have carried away captives, and borne away their stuff, and they have destroyed there about a thousand men. While these letters were yet reading, behold, there came other messengers from Galilee, with their clothes rent, who reported on this wise and said, They of Ptolemais, and of Tyrus, and Sidon, and all Galilee of the Gentiles, are assembled together against us to consume us. Now when Judas and the people heard these words, there assembled a great congregation together to consult what they should do for their brethren that were in trouble, and assaulted of them. Then said Judas unto Simon his brother, Choose thee out men, and go, and to deliver thy brethren that are in Galilee. For I and Jonathan my brother will go into the country of Galaad. So he left Joseph the son of Zechariah, and Azarias, captain of the people, with the remnant of the host in Judea, to keep it, unto whom he gave commandment, saying, Take ye the charge of this people, and see that ye make not war against the heathen, until the time that we come again. Now unto Simon were given three thousand men to go into Galilee, and unto Judas eight thousand men for the country of Galaad. Then went Simon into Galilee, where he fought many battles with the heathen, so that the heathen were discomfited by him. And he pursued them unto the gate of Ptolemais, and there were slain of the heathen about three thousand men, whose spoils he took, and those that were in Galilee, and in Arbatis, with their wives and their children and all that they had, took he away with him, and brought them into Judea with great joy. Judas Maccabeus also, and his brother Jonathan, went over Jordan, and traveled three days' journey in the wilderness, where they met with the Nabathites, who came unto them in a peaceable manner, and told them everything that had happened to their brethren in the land of Galaad, and how that many of them were shut up in Basora and Basor, and Alema, Kosfor, Maked, and Karnaim, all these cities are strong and great, and that they were shut up in the rest of the cities of the country of Galaad, and that against tomorrow they had appointed to bring their host against the forts, and to take them, and to destroy them all in one day. Hereupon Judas and his host turned suddenly by the way of the wilderness unto Basora, and when he had won the city, he slew all the males with the edge of the sword and took all their spoils, and burned the city with fire, from whence he removed by night, and went till he came to the fortress, and betimes in the morning, 
They looked up, and, behold, there was an innumerable people bearing ladders and other engines of war to take the fortress, for they assaulted them. When Judas therefore saw that the battle was begun, and that the cry of the city went up to heaven with trumpets and a great sound, he said unto his host, Fight this day for your brethren. So he went forth behind them in three companies, who sounded their trumpets and cried with prayer. Then the host of Timotheus, knowing that it was Maccabeus, fled from him, wherefore he smote them with a great slaughter, so that there were killed of them that day about eight thousand men. This done, Judas turned aside to Mosva, and after he had assaulted it, he took and slew all the males therein, and received the spoils thereof, and burnt it with fire. From thence went he, and took Kosphon, Magid, Bosor, and the other cities of the country of Galaad. After these things gathered Timotheus, another host, and encamped against Raphon, beyond the brook. So Judas sent men to espy the host, who brought him word, saying, All the heathen that be round about us are assembled unto them, even a very great host. He hath also hired the Arabians to help them, and they have pitched their tents beyond the brook, ready to come and fight against thee. Upon this, Judas went to meet them. Then Timothy is said unto the captains of his host, When Judas and his host come near the brook, if he pass over the first unto us, we shall not be able to withstand him, for he will mightily prevail against us. But if he be afraid and camp beyond the river, we shall go over unto him and prevail against him. Now when Judas came near the brook, he caused the scribes of the people to remain by the brook, unto whom he gave commandment, saying, Suffer no man to remain in the camp, but let all come to the battle. So he went first over unto them, and all the people after him. Then all the heathen, being discomfited before him, cast away their weapons, and fled unto the temple that was at Karnaim. But they took the city, and burned the temple with all that were therein. Thus was Karnaim subdued, neither could they stand any longer before Judas. Then Judas gathered together all the Israelites that were in the country of Galaad, from the least unto the greatest, even their wives, and their children, and their stuff, a very great host, to the end they might come into the land of Judea. Now when they came unto Ephron, this was a great city in the way as they should go, very well fortified. They could not turn from it, either on the right hand or the left, but must needs pass through the midst of it. Then they of the city shut them out, and stopped up the gates with stones, whereupon Judas sent unto them in peaceable manner, saying, Let us pass through your land to go into our own country, and none shall do you any hurt. We will only pass through on foot. Howbeit, they would not open unto him. Wherefore Judas commanded a proclamation to be made throughout the host, that every man should pitch his tent in the place where he was. So the soldiers pitched, and assaulted the city all that day and all that night, till at the length the city was delivered into his hands, who then slew all the males with the edge of the sword, and raised the city, and took the spoils thereof, and passed through the city over them that were slain. After this went they over Jordan into the great plain before Bethson, and Judas gathered together those that came behind, and exhorted the people all the way through, till they came into the land of Judea. So they went up to Mount Sion with joy and gladness, where they offered burnt offerings, because not one of them were slain until they had returned in peace. Now what time as Judas and Jonathan were in the land of Galaad, and Simon his brother in Galilee, before Ptolemaeus, Joseph the son of Zacharias, and Azarias, captain of the garrisons, heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds, which they had done. Wherefore they said, Let us also get us a name, and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went toward Yamnia. Then came Gorgias and his men out of the city to fight against them. And so it was, that Joseph and Azarus were put to flight, and pursued unto the borders of Judea. And there were slain that day of the people of Israel, about two thousand men. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel, 
because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren, but thought to do some valiant act. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those, by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. Howbeit the man Judas and his brethren were greatly renowned in the sight of all Israel, and of all the heathen, wheresoever their name was heard of, insomuch as the people assembled unto them with joyful acclamations. Afterward went Judas forth with his brethren, and fought against the children of Esau in the land toward the south, where he smote Hebron, and the towns thereof, and pulled down the fortress of it, and burned the towers thereof round about. From thence he removed to go into the land of the Philistines, and passed through Samaria. At that time certain priests, desirous to shew their valor, were slain in battle, for that they went out to fight unadvisedly. So Judas turned to Azotus in the land of the Philistines, and when he had pulled down their altars, and burned their carved images with fire, and spoiled their cities, he returned into the land of Judea. 1 Maccabees chapter 6 About that time, King Antiochus traveled through the high countries, heard say, that Elimaeus in the country of Persia was a city greatly renowned for riches, silver, and gold, and that there was in it a very rich temple, wherein were coverings of gold, and breastplates, and shields, which Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian king, who reigned first among the Grecians, had left there. Wherefore he came and sought to take the city, and to spoil it, but he was not able, because they of the city, having had warning thereof, rose up against him in battle. So he fled, and departed thence with great heaviness, and returned to Babylon. Moreover, there came one who brought him tidings into Persia, that the armies which went against the land of Judea were put to flight, and that Lysias, who went forth first with a great power, was driven away of the Jews, and that they were made strong by the armor and power and store of spoils which they had gotten of the armies whom they had destroyed, also that they had pulled down the abomination which he had set up upon the altar in Jerusalem, and that they had compassed about the sanctuary with high walls, as before, and his city, Bethshura. Now when the king heard these words, he was astonished and sore moved, whereupon he laid him down upon his bed, and fell sick for grief, because it had not befallen him as he looked for. And there he continued many days, for his grief was ever more and more, and he made account that he should die. Wherefore he called for all his friends, and said unto them, The sleep is gone from mine eyes, and my heart faileth for very care. And I thought with myself, Into what tribulation am I come, and how great a flood of misery is it, wherein now I am? For I was bountiful and beloved in my power. But now I remember the evils that I did at Jerusalem, and that I took all the vessels of gold and silver that were therein and sent to destroy the inhabitants of Judea without a cause. I perceived, therefore, that for this cause these troubles are come upon me, and, behold, I perish through great grief in a strange land. Then called he for Philip, one of his friends, who he made ruler over all his realm, and gave him the crown, and his robe, and his signet, to the end he should bring up his son Antiochus, and nourish him up for the kingdom. So King Antiochus died there in the hundred forty and ninth year. Now when Lysias knew that the king was dead, he set up Antiochus his son, whom he had brought up being young, to reign in his stead, and his name he called Eupater. About this time they that were in the tower shut up the Israelites round about the sanctuary, and sought always their hurt, and the strengthening of the heathen. Wherefore Judas, pursuing to destroy them, called all the people together to besiege them. So they came together, and besieged them in the hundred and fiftieth year. And he made mounts for shots against them, and other engines. Howbeit certain of them that were besieged got forth, unto whom some ungodly men of Israel joined themselves. And they went unto the king, and said, How long will it be ere thou execute judgment, and avenge our brethren? We have been willing to serve thy father, and to do as he would have us, and to obey his commandments. 
for which cause they of our nation besiege the tower, and are alienated from us. Moreover, as many of us as they could light on, they slew, and spoiled our inheritance. Neither have they stretched out their hand against us, only, but also against their borders. And, behold, this day are they besieging the tower, at Jerusalem, to take it. The sanctuary also, and Bethshura, have they fortified. Wherefore, if thou dost not prevent them quickly, they will do the greater things than these, neither shalt thou be able to rule them. Now when the king heard this, he was angry, and gathered together all his friends, and the captains of his army, and those that had charge of the horse. There came also unto him, from other kingdoms, and from isles of the sea, bands of hired soldiers, so that the number of his army was an hundred thousand footmen, and twenty thousand horsemen, and two and thirty elephants exercised in battle. These went through Idumea, and pitched against Bethshura, which they assaulted many days, making engines of war. But they of Bethshura came out, and burned them with fire, and fought valiantly. Upon this, Judas removed from the tower, and pitched in Beth Zacharias, over against the king's camp. Then the king, rising very early, marched fiercely with his host toward Bath Zacharias, where his army made them ready to battle, and sounded the trumpets. And to the end, they might provoke the elephants to fight. They shewed them the blood of grapes and mulberries. Moreover, they divided the beasts among the armies, and for every elephant, they appointed a thousand men, armed with coats of mail and with helmets of brass on their heads. And beside this, for every beast were ordained five hundred horsemen of the best. These were ready at every occasion, wheresoever the beast was, and whithersoever the beast went, they went also, neither departed they from him. And upon the beasts were there strong towers of wood, which covered every one of them, and were girt fast unto them with devices. There were also upon every one two and thirty strong men that fought upon them, beside the Indian that ruled him. As for the remnant of the horsemen, they set them on this side and that side at the two parts of the host, giving them signs what to do, and being harnessed all over amidst the ranks. Now when the sun shone upon the shields of gold and brass, the mountains glistered therewith and shined like lamps of fire. So part of the king's army being spread upon the high mountains and part on the valleys below, they marched on safely and in order. Wherefore all that heard the noise of their multitude, and the marching of the company, and the rattling of the harness, were moved, for the army was very great and mighty. Then Judas and his host drew near, and entered into battle, and there were slain of the king's army six hundred men. Eleazar also, surnamed Savaran, perceived that one of the beasts, armed with royal harness, was higher than all the rest and supposed that the king was upon him, put himself in jeopardy, to the end he might deliver his people, and get him a perpetual name. Wherefore he ran upon him courageously, through the midst of the battle, slain on the right hand and on the left, so that they were divided from him on both sides. Which done, he crept under the elephant, and thrust him under, and slew him. Whereupon the elephant fell down upon him, and there he died. Howbeit, the rest of the Jews, seeing the strength of the king and the violence of his forces, turned away from them. Then the king's army went up to Jerusalem to meet them, and the king pitched his tents against Judea and against Mount Zion. But with them that were in Bethshura he made peace, for they came out of the city, because they had no victuals there to endure the siege, it being a year of rest to the land. So the king took Bethshura, and set a garrison there to keep it. As for the sanctuary, he besieged it many days, and set there artillery with engines, and instruments to cast fire, and stones, and pieces to cast darts, and slings. Whereupon they also made engines against their engines, and held them battle a long season. Yet at the last, their vessels being without victuals, for that it was the seventh year, and they in Judea, that were delivered from the Gentiles, had eaten up the residue of the store. There were but a few left in the sanctuary, 
because the famine did so prevail against them that they were fain to disperse themselves, every man to his own place. At that time, Lysias heard say that Philip, whom Antiochus the king, whilst he lived, had appointed to bring up his son Antiochus, that he might be king, was returned out of Persia and Media, and the king's host also that went with him, and that he sought to take unto him the ruling of the affairs. Wherefore he went in all haste, and said to the king, and the captains of the host, and the company, We decay daily, and our victuals are but small, and the place we lay siege unto is strong, and the affairs of the kingdom lie upon us. Now therefore let us be friends with these men, and make peace with them, and with all their nation, and covenant with them, that they shall live after their laws, as they did before, for they are therefore displeased, and have done all these things, because we abolished their laws. So the king and the princes were content, wherefore he sent unto them to make peace, and they accepted thereof. Also the king and the princes made an oath unto them, whereupon they went out of the stronghold. Then the king entered into Mount Zion, but when he saw the strength of the place, he broke his oath that he had made, and gave commandment to pull down the wall round about. Afterward departed he in all haste, and returned unto Antiochia, where he found Philip to be master of the city. So he fought against him, and took the city by force. The Apocryphal Book of Ecclesiasticus, Chapter 39 But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High, and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient, and be occupied in prophecies. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men, and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences, and be conversant in dark parables. He shall serve among great men, and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries, for he hath tried the good and the evil among men. He will give his heart to resort early to the Lord that made him, and will pray before the Most High, and will open his mouth in prayer, and make supplication for his sins. When the great Lord will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. He shall pour out wise sentences, and give thanks unto the Lord in his prayer. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge, and in his secrets shall he meditate. He shall shew forth that which he hath learned, and shall glory in the law of the covenant of the Lord. Many shall commend his understanding, and so long as the world endureth, it shall not be blotted out. His memorial shall not depart away, and his name shall live from generation to generation. Nations shall shew forth his wisdom, and the congregation shall declare his praise. If he die, he shall leave a greater name than a thousand, and if he live, he shall increase it. Yet have I more to say, which I have thought upon, for I am filled as the moon at the full. Hearken unto me, ye holy children, and bud forth as a rose, growing by the brook of the field, and give ye a sweet savor as frankincense, and flourish as a lily, sending forth a smell, and sing a song of praise. Bless the Lord in all his works, magnify his name, and shew forth his praise with the songs of your lips, and with harps, and in praising him, ye shall say after this manner, All the works of the Lord are exceeding good, and whatsoever he commandeth shall be accomplished in due season. And none may say, What is this? Wherefore is that? For at time convenient they shall all be sought out. At his commandment the waters stood as an heap, and at the words of his mouth the receptacles of waters. At his commandment is done whatsoever pleaseth him and none can hinder, when he will save. The works of all flesh are before him, and nothing can be hid from his eyes. He seeth from everlasting to everlasting, and there is nothing wonderful before him. A man need not to say, What is this? Wherefore is that? For he hath made all things for their uses. His blessing covered the dry land as a river, and watered it as a flood. As he hath turned the waters into saltness, so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked.
For the good are good things, created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil, and clothing. All these things are for good to the godly, so to the sinners they are turned into evil. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction they pour out their force, and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell, and famine, and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts, and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth, when need is, and when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. Therefore from the beginning I was resolved, and thought upon these things, and have left them in writing. All the works of the Lord are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season, so that a man cannot say, This is worse than that, for in time they shall all be well approved, and therefore praise ye the Lord with the whole heart and mouth, and bless the name of the Lord. Revelation chapter 10 And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, Seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven, saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea, and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that are therein, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants, the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea, and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, and nations, and tongues, and kings. That concludes our reading for the day. May the Lord bless everyone listening with strength, health, and courage, today and always.